Most of you are at least familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and we know that if our basic physical needs are not met, there is very little chance of advancing up the hierarchy towards self-actualization, that is true personal growth and fulfillment as a human being. And that's why we make sure that kids in schools have their physical and safety needs met before we even expect them to be able to learn. And why support for breakfast programs and for lunch programs in schools is so very important. Well, going beyond those physical and safety needs, there are also psychological human needs that we all share. And these needs tremendously impact our ability and our motivation to learn. So this lecture is about theory, but in the foundation module, you'll get to put some of this theory into practice, practical strategies, when you think about instructional design and the strategies that we can employ. The theory I'm going to talk about is called self-determination theory, and it's one of the most studied theories of motivation and of human psychological needs in the world. It was originally put forth by doctors uh, Edward Deasy and Richard Ryan from the University of Rochester, but it has since been researched by literally hundreds of scholars worldwide, including myself. It's been used across uh, many domains, including medicine and education, and it's been found to hold up cross-culturally as well, which is very important. And I wanted to share some of this theory with you because it has enlightened my own work in designing and evaluating online learning environments. And so I believe that it's also going to help stimulate your thinking as well. Again, self-determination theory holds that all human beings have certain psychological needs and that these needs beg to be satisfied in order to feel healthy and well-adjusted. And as I mentioned, these needs, please be thinking about what this all means in terms of our roles as instructors and particularly when we are no longer face-to-face -face with our learners, but rather we are interacting with them in cyberspace. The first of these is the need for competence. We need to feel that we can be effective. DC says that if a person doesn't feel competent, you can actually predict negative psychological consequences, and this has been proven. So what do we do to help learners feel competent as online learners? The second need we're going to look at is relatedness. We're social creatures. We all want to relate to one another, to belong. And the third need is autonomy. We want to feel we have control over what we do. We have the desire to regulate our own environment, our own learning. And when we feel that sense of control, we become engaged. We're motivated. We're willing to expend an effort and some energy on learning. But what happens if you're an online learner in an environment that's poorly organized? You cannot find your way around. Some of the links work. There are not many choices. Now, how's that going to affect your sense of autonomy and your sense of being able to control your online learning? So while content is king, so to speak, our roles as instructional designers will also mean that we have to support a learner's sense of competence, autonomy, and relatedness in an online learning environment.